Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome back in Barilo. Our next speaker is uh, Cristina <coughs> Vinciano. She's a postgraduate researcher with the University of Nottingham, where she works with the remote sensing. But today she's going to speak on behalf of geospatial.org, which is the Romanian chapter of uh, OSGEO. Um, her topic is community mapping of the COVID-19 pandemic in Romania using Phosphor-G. Um, but unfortunately, due to um, scheduling conflict, in fact, she is uh, chairing another session in parallel, um, she will not be able to present this uh, live. So I have a pre-recorded audio that I will play for you <clears throat> on this topic. Hello everybody, my name is Christina. I'm a PhD student with the University of Nottingham and I'm talking today on behalf of geospatial.org um, and volunteers. Um, and my presentation is going to be about how we use Phosphor-G to track the COVID-19 evolution um, in Romania. So first of all, I would like to introduce our team. Uh, we are 32 people in this team that created a platform, the COVID-19 platform. Um, some of us are volunteers from the geospatial.org organization, which um, is an OSGO chapter. Some of us are just volunteers that wanted to help during the initial stages of the pandemic. Um, and everybody came together after a um, call that we had uh, in March 2020 when we started the platform. Um, we knew kind of uh, it was very obvious with the situation that was happening back then that um, we're going to have a pandemic situation. Uh, so we're going to go into lockdown uh, based on where you can see in Italy or the rest of Europe. Um, so uh, a lot of us wanted to help somehow and since we didn't know exactly how to do it uh, we, uh, because we were not medical experts, we came together to uh, help with the skills that we knew we have and those are mapping and with additional skills. Some of us uh, contributed to communicating, some of us contributed to just collecting the data um, creating graphs, uh, technical skills, setting up the platform and the technical um, background, um, or just advising with different information about health and so on. So it's just a 32 of us. Um, some of us are still doing it. Uh, some are contributing less or have, um, have departed, but um, it's been a very collective effort. And to give you some uh, insight of what this effort means and uh, why we started everything and how we navigated all this period, I'm going to uh, give you um, a quick trip through a timeline um, of this COVID-19 pandemic in Romania. So the most important steps that we encountered. Um, the first one is when we had the announcement of the first Romanian COVID-19 case. That happened on the 26th of February, uh, 26th of February 2020. It was already after Italy uh, was in a very bad uh, state. So um, that was our first case. We were expecting it. And uh, we knew at that point that it's going to come to Romania as well. Um, and we would have to take some, um, uh, we will we'll go into restrictions, we will go into a certain state um, of emergency alert and so on. Um, so that is actually what prompted um, us to think about contributing. And as I said, we are not medical advisors, we're not medical trained, uh, so our training is in mapping. 
So we started to put together this idea of creating a map mapping platform also because we were looking at what was happening worldwide, all the platforms that popped uh, mapping the cases and so on. Uh, we were looking at uh, platforms that were completely open um, and platforms that were uh, not showing a lot of data, uh, governments that had different approach uh, and so on. And uh, we were also thinking of what will be the approach for the Romanian authorities. Up to this point, we could actually locate every single case uh, with a lot of detail, we knew the names of the people, we knew um, who they got in contact with, and um, we could actually do this very nice graph of relationships between the different cases. Uh, but um, uh, obviously, um, that was not the situation that would last a lot once the cases were uh, increasing. And uh, indeed, the cases did increase, and that prompted the WHO uh, General Director to declare COVID-19 a global pandemic. And that also prompted the Romanian authorities to declare a state of emergency once the number of cases grew uh, uncontrollably. Um, that was on the 17th of March 2020 for Romania, um, and it was not only a state of emergency and a lockdown, a national lockdown, but it was also a military imposed lockdown. And that was very important because if up to now we could learn about the cases, we could learn details about their names, we could learn details about where, their whereabouts. Uh, obviously, uh, the, these uh, cases started from all these little details to, to be um, uh, less detailed. Let's say we, we knew that there was a case, we knew the gender of the person, we knew the, um, the age and so on. At some point we knew that they were um, institutionalized, they were like in, in a hospital and then they were moved in another place. And that was already a little bit blurry. Well, we we um, went into this state of emergency, and on the 19th of March 2020, we went into local secrecy. Uh, what local secrecy means is that all these detailed data that we had up to that point, that we were collecting either from media or, or from uh, local authorities, so local health authorities, uh, local um, administration and so on, uh, which was at the county level, uh, we could not do this anymore. So the military administration said stop and we would go at the national level um, and we would only receive one uh, once per day uh, a summary, a summary report in which we're getting only one number at national level. One number for the number of deaths, one number of the uh, number of cases, number of uh, recovered. And that created a huge gap because we couldn't map it anymore. We couldn't have this detail at county level. And besides that, we couldn't um, locate the cases. We couldn't do that relationship graph anymore. We couldn't uh, follow what was happening to the cases. We didn't know if these were cases fresh cases from the day before, or there were cases that got reported one week ago and they're um, basically delayed up to now. Um, and for, for some of this data, we couldn't find it anymore and we still can't find it. So even up to now, we don't know where those people vanished. And um, besides that, we we were forced to put, in, uh, to put together all these mechanisms to find this data. So um, we went into looking into a lot of data sources, um, what we could find from local authorities, uh, what we could find from the media. Uh, we had a tool uh, that helped us to scar the media and so on, but that was a lot of manual labor. Uh, it was really helpful. Um, the fact that Romania and GDPR has a very um, strange relationship. Uh, so we, uh, sometimes you would get some information in the media that uh, you would not get otherwise. But anyhow, it created a huge gap in the data set. 
Uh, we got back the details on the 2nd of April. Uh, it didn't last too long, the secrecy, but um, we still got uh, truncated uh, details. Uh, obviously, not they, they didn't return to the same level of information as before. Um, and furthermore, all the information that was delivered was extremely unstructured. So besides the fact that we could not find all the information, it was incredibly unstructured, coming from different authorities in different formats. Sometimes they were just written uh, notes, and uh, sometimes it's just uh, PDF or very unstructured Excel and so on. Um, so that posed further issues. Um, on the 15th of May, uh, finally, the lockdown ended, uh, the national lockdown ended, uh, Romania uh, kept a state of alert, which is still uh, ongoing, and um, from that point onwards, uh, a string of chaotic measures or measures that you could find everywhere else in the world started, so basically we had these times in which uh, we um, we got a um, either a schools opening, closing, uh, restaurants opening, closing, and so on. And um, the most notable moment was the electoral moment in which we had to go to voting. And that was uh, very interesting from the point of view of the authorities because they relaxed the measures uh, right before and uh, the restrictions uh, got back afterwards, but uh, you could definitely see a rise in the number of cases. Um, we got to another milestone this year uh, in March, when uh, actually in February, when they published um, the first data set of open data, um, which came from the authorities directly. So if I'm up to then, uh, that moment, we had some uh, platforms that were getting some data from the authorities. Uh, we never got open data from the authorities, and you've seen all these secrecy and so on. Um, 15th of February was a milestone because uh, we got this first date of the open data. And we actually got to discuss about it uh, a few days later in March, uh, the open data day, because this data set was not perfect. Uh, it was full of <laughs> of unstructured data, uh, let's say. Uh, it had a lot of shortcomings and um, the citizen initiatives that were mapping the pandemic, the NGOs that were involved in this got together with the government at this first discussion about open data and about this data set specifically. Um, and we expressed our additional needs, what we would like to, to have in this data set and how it should minimally look like for us to, uh, to use it uh, in a very streamlined way. Or this uh, got really political uh, very quickly and it didn't last long. And uh, the health minister, the one that initiated all this open data um, uh, publishing, uh, got dismissed. And uh, that came with the fact that uh, for uh, for a while, the data set was not updated anymore. So even the short glimpse that we had into what data the government has uh, has disappeared quite quickly. Uh, coming back to our platform, uh, I want to reiterate that this is a collective effort. Uh, it's community volunteering. We have 32 people that brought um, into this a lot of skills, uh, diverse skills, um, and it's not only uh, us, a mapping NGO, um, geospatial NGO, but it's also people that had no geospatial um, knowledge or no uh, training, but got together with us and we're collaborating on producing this platform and this data. Um, as I said, we're looking at multiple data sources, uh, we looked at local authorities, we looked at national authorities, uh, we have this communicate um, that we're um, with this um, report that we get from the authorities, but we also look at different other uh, data um, that uh, we could use to get some more insight. So, um, because of the nature 
of this um, of this data sets, uh, the fact that they're being spread between in, uh, uh, among different sources, uh, they also come in different formats and so on. And so it's sometimes it's a lot of unfiltered data uh, and unstructured data. And we have to to do all the manual uh, or automatic where it's possible uh, filtering. Um, sometimes, for example, in report you had this. Uh, PDF that was unable to, we were unable to um, uh, perform any character recognition, so we could extract the data automatically, so we had to do it manually and so on. Uh, and because of all these struggles and uh, all this secrecy from the government, we issued this open data manifest, um, which I put here in the presentation. And this open data manifest uh, is basically what we intended uh, from uh, to be an outcry from the um, uh, citizen initiatives towards the government. And it had some echoes, as you've seen, uh, they did something in the end, but it's, it's not perfect. Um, we do this collection of data every single day since uh, last year in March. We have been collecting data daily daily scouring the media, daily uh, collecting the data and daily trying to make it um, um, usable and to put it in, uh, to curate it in a way that it can be used by other people. Uh, we try to constantly update and improve our platform. Um, that means that it's not only about the data that we have and the way that it is structured and the way that we curate it and the way that we look for it. Um, additional information, but it's also the way that the platform um, integrates with all this information. We use open source technologies to build our platform uh, on and um, a variety of useful, uh, useful products that go into there um, in, from different technologies uh, to different data sets that uh, are additional to the health uh, information that we get. Um, and all our data is freely distributed, it's open access. Uh, we share it with the community, we share it with whoever wants to, to use it. Uh, and we also collaborate with some other initiatives um, to, to support them and they support us. So our platform is based on open source technologies, as I said. We have a backend that is Node.js, PostgreSQL and PostGIS. Um, we also have in the back end, we collect the data for Google spreadsheets uh, and uh, all the hosting for our platform is supported uh, generously by the Sage Group from the West University of Timisoara and uh, that goes through Amazon Web Services. Um, the front end, however, is on multiple technologies because we had multiple skills. Um, so some of us are more familiar with R and Shiny, some of us are more familiar with open layers, um, Angular, um, so basically JavaScript, uh, or Python and Plotly and so on. And we also have some of the maps that are based on Google Earth Engine uh, with um, subsequent data sets and Carto, which generously supported us uh, through their uh, coronavirus program. Um, as I said, all data is open for access. We distribute it through CSVs and uh, whoever wants to integrate it uh, has also a dedicated API to do so for each, um, each data set. All the data that we have inside, uh, so we have health data um, that we collect from authorities. That in, uh, includes active cases, new cases, testing, death recoveries, vaccines and, and so on. Um, we also have data that we collect from press releases or from the news, uh, from the media itself. So we had that tool that was developed by Casa Journalist Lui, which translates the journalist's house. It's an independent um, uh, uh, journalism outlet. Um, and they helped us with this tool that helps uh, us to look through a lot of newsletters and scar the media for additional information. We collaborate with Dragos Vanam from graphs.ro uh, to calculate the R rate. Uh, he's a statistician. statistician. Sorry. Um, 
We also have the um, health infrastructure, marginalized communities and their access to health infrastructure um, and some European context to date. Uh, other data that we include is European mobility to understand the mobility patterns, uh, points of interest, um, other mobility data that is national from Apple, Google and Waze, uh, air quality that we um, correlate with uh, Sentinel 5P from Copernicus program and Air Live, um, which are ground based sensors. Uh, we looked at uh, voting and elections data, um, public interest into the COVID-19 seawater temperature for the summertime. And basically all the indicators for impact, which is agriculture, tourism, demographics, real estate, automotive industry, economy, communication and media. So we could actively monitor how COVID uh, is impacting all these um, all these sectors um, during the, the pandemic in Romania. So we could see uh, um, through the data when we had different uh, restrictions, what kind of impact they had, or when we had an increased number of cases, what kind of impact they had. Got some media support as well. Um, we got into some uh, national news outlets um, and uh, also um, Sometimes they just um, reported uh, using our platform, sometimes they embedded uh, our, and they collaborated with us. Uh, we got also into international um, uh, aggregators, news aggregators and so on. Some support from Twitter community and uh, we even got into research. So there are uh, research articles that um, used our platform to, to do some, uh, some to get some insights and uh, help their research. I'm just going to uh, quickly uh, get you through a quick uh, through a demo um, so we could see our platform. So this is the dashboard when you enter. We have the number of uh, confirmed cases, active cases, the new cases in the last 24 hours, uh, whoever has been um, recovered, uh, deaths, uh, um, county level, uh, locality uh, level, um, so basically very granular data about the uh, number of cases, county level cases and quarantine areas. Um, all this is summarized in these graphs here. Uh, we also have an English version that uh, is not complete though. Um, we have some maps. Um, on different uh, thematics, so this is health infrastructure, we have uh, voting presence, European context, these are supported by CARTO, we have this map of um, NO2 concentrations, um, and we also have vaccination map, and a myriad of statistics are uh, related to health indicators, to health variables, um, and also um, environment, public interest, and so on. Um, these are all very unstructured just because they come from different people. Everybody contributed in a certain way, but we are working to make the structure. And finally, we have this uh, impact um, uh, graphs that look a little bit odd <laughs> right now um, that um, measure the impact of COVID-19 uh, over the Romanian uh, society in general. So different indicators from economy, communications, populations and so on. Um, just to come uh, to conclude, um, I'm very thankful that you follow this presentation. Um, or if you have additional questions, uh, we are very open to answer them. We've got the contact here um, and basically uh, we're uh, looking forward to, to hear your thoughts about what we're doing, uh, if you have any suggestions for improvements and so on. Um, I just want to thank again um, all my colleagues for doing this work for the last, uh, the past year and um, to really appreciate that uh, we, we got some, um, some good appraisal from the public for this, um, this platform. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you have a great first
Okay, really a pity that we don't have the opportunity to ask questions about this interesting <clears throat> presentation that was actually the last uh, during this afternoon session. And for those of you who uh, are still feeling for continuing Phosphor-G, uh, even today, uh, there is the social gathering. So I encourage everybody to, to show up there. Okay, have a continued uh, nice day.